Welcome back, everyone, to the LCS Challengers League Summer Promotion Tournament presented by Subway. I'm Mazel. I'm joined by Hawk. And what a Series 1 to kick us off. We've had nothing but three-game series so far in the promo. And we're going to see if that continues. We're on to Mirage Alliance versus CCG. Yeah. And Mazel, I think my takeaway from these first three series of promotion mm -hmm. is you are in danger if you win the first game of the series. Because <laughs> not only have we seen three-game series back-to-back-to-back, but we've seen back to back to back three game reverse sweeps. It's actually insane. We take a look at the upcoming matches here. We just saw Lit take a reverse best of three sweep over Winthrop University. And now Mirage Alliance versus CCG will be a banger, no doubt. We're right into draft because we got to get this thing underway. Those East Coasters, it's getting late. We got Mirage Alliance on the blue side. We got CCG on the red side. The Aurelian Soul immediately wow. banned and uh, taking away some of that comfort there. I mean, understandable, paying respect over to Bradley. And that brings us to the main focus of this game, which is yeah. Bradley against Saligo, the new addition to Mirage Alliance against the new ish addition to CCG. CCG, until yesterday, game one, they had yet to lose a single competitive map with Bradley. And even though they fell down yesterday, uh, they've still yet to lose a match. And Bradley yeah. has been without a doubt the best or one of the best players in tier three clearly too good for this level even after roll swapping back to mid and with saligo on the other side yeah. another player that i think most would agree is above this promotion tournament level when it comes to expectations i really like the highlight on bradley uh, i think his time on team liquid towards the end was a little rough a lot of things going on outside of game as well but it's been really cool to see him regain some of that confidence that we know him for uh, back on when he was CP freeze, you know, I uh, was dominating mid lanes and I'm very excited to see him back and he's been doing so in, in the qualifiers now trying to continue some of that momentum that I feel like still is the main word uh, for this promotion yep. tournament so far. We are into the thick of things now on top of that Aurelian soul. It is the Huey ban and the Jinx by Mirage Alliance. We also have that Orianna and the Varus ban over there by CCG. Yeah, and we've seen a lot of utility focused AD carries more on the bottom side for mm -hmm. Prismal as opposed to those hyper carries for Instinct. Instinct has in many ways been a, a late game insurance style of carry where in the early stages of the game, it's actually been a lot about this top side, this young Crimson Yukino. And I think for Yukino in particular, I'm looking here for the one pick, just get something aggressive. Get a Xin Zhao, get, you know, a Vi, get something that can just make plays, start them off in the early game, because that is where a lot of the yeah. playmaking for CCG comes from. And I love it because when you talk to junglers around the scene, even if he's in tier three, no matter where, you're like, oh, I want to face Yukito. I want to face Yukito. He has such staying power, it feels like, in the junglers of tier two, tier three. We'll see if he gets the sticks this time around. It is the Ash Azir lock in for CCG. So a lot of strength in the mid lane, as well as a lot of utility to set up. And yeah, speaking of utility, send a first pick for either Neo or Prismal because I guess, you know, we talked about Saligo. I almost forgot when I said <laughs> utility 80s for Prismal. Prismal's back as the support. He's going to be piloting the Nautilus more than likely. And they got Neo back. He was in Vietnam for most of the split, returning now to North America to come and play in promotion, was on the roster as a substitute the entire time Ooh. for Mirage. We have, wow, a lot of scaling, <laughs> I mean, in these first three picks. Mirage Alliance going Full late game Senna Nautilus Corky against a bit more proactivity with the Ash uh, Azir so far. Very curious how this Corky is going to play it out. Uh, I have not been a biggest fan of Corky as a whole. It takes way too long, yeah. it feels like, to get online. Uh, and a lot of times the compositions we're seeing, it doesn't necessarily get that much time. And with a lot of the engage potential that uh, CCG are grabbing already, it's going to be difficult to hold on to that stormy storm that they were bringing. The Zin's out very big for Yukino as he will have a lot of that skirmish that we wanted him to have. Yep, again, I, I like this sort of proactive style pick coming through for him. Just get him going because I think Yukino, he was our second team all tier three jungler. And I thought he had a solid tournament when he came in on CCG. <laughs> he looked really good in there, uh, in his good games. Specifically, I'm looking at the games he against good Ole in Miss games. in the finals, right? Yeah, he looked amazing in the games that he was good. But I'm not going to lie to you, Mizell. Mm. He did have some stinkers as well. So uh, I, I think it was a bit of up and down for this player. But the Zinjawa pick that, you know, he's able to really just unleash himself on. Yeah. And we'll see what they can pick around that as well. I expect something of a uh, 
I guess aggressive bot side if you can get it for instinct, but we'll see as the Vi Nocturne where the ban focuses for CCG in the second phase. Try to take away some of the power and pressure that Dardock can have as he makes his way back to the jungle. Yeah, there's a lot of things that you can pick here. I would expect this to actually be an Ash AD carry for instinct just because I think it's really hard to play an Ash support lane into Senna Knot. It just sounds mm -hmm. difficult to remove them from the lane. Um, I would like a tank support. Like, honestly, something like a Braum, especially because you're up against Corky, you get Ash Braum, just tons of CC coming through, and then a carry top laner on five for Crimson, I think is very, very good for CCG. But no, okay, they actually go for the Ezreal. I, I don't That's know. I'm not sure I feel about this. Right there. <laughs> a little comfort going to Instinct's way, though. I love to see it. And you have some of that distance to kind of stave off the engage of uh, Prismal on that Nautilus. Uh, and, and I do wonder now, okay, the Rex side gets locked in. Oh, this no. has been something that hasn't really been focused. Again, this is fearless. So this will be a one-off for Mirage Alliance, but Alora, I'm going to be happy with that. So, and now what does the R5 oh, wait. come? Oh, oh, it's a flex. Trade. Because I was going to say, Crimson's Olaf is still up and available. It's been his favorite champion throughout this split. He has been quoted as saying, I will blind Olaf into anyone, into anything. But... I would expect it to be pretty good in a Rek'Sai, but it's not that great in a Jax. So opting instead maybe for the tank, just only going to play around the bottom side of the map here for CCG. I'll be real with you. This is a bit of a different like look. It. It's been a lot more carries on the top side, consistency on the bottom side. This time around, it feels like it's a bit more about trying to attack Neo and Prismal through Instinct and Trevor. I love that we're getting so much Otis to the jungle matchup too. Again, a Mirage Alliance team that has had giant changes yeah. right like i feel like it's not the same you team. know not having will uh, moving dardock over there as well bringing in neo bringing in saligo they're trying to find a way to re-earn their spot in the nacl and it's utmost importance right they have a, a very similar scaling composition some strength through alorum but on the other side this is a would-be two tier three super team yeah. and i think it's been really cool to see how they've adjusted with bradley coming to mid lane crimson going to top lane and kind of the way that they've approached the style of play for these qualifiers and now into the promotion tournament and bradley has been just so insane for this team i mean a late game insurance carry he's been shot caller i think in many ways split pusher like he just has dictated so much about the way that this team has played and on the Azir. I mean, I know it's a bummer. We're highlighting Saligo and Bradley coming into these teams and they're in Azir. Corky, damn it, man. <laughs> but I, it still should be a good one in the later stages. I will say though, I think I favor Mirage Alliance's draft quite a bit as long as they're able to survive in the bottom side. Surviving is the key to it though. And the storm is definitely gonna be coming. Raj Alliance need to stave that off a little bit. I think getting Prismal out on the roam, if you can, or not Prismal, rather, Neo out on the roam early. I, I've seen a lot of success with that in the LPL. Getting uh, Senna in combination with a very skirmish-heavy jungler like Jax can be very, very nice. But that is where the, the jungle pathing really comes into conversation. I think Dardock and Yukino are going to have a lot of say on the early machinations of both these two teams. And, you know, Mazel, how much do you think we're going to mess that up? Calling Neo Prismal when we're expecting the AD carry of <laughs> Mirage Alliance, right? Because, you know, Prismal's still on the team. He's still there. Just He's still there. Support. Back in the, pris uh, the uh, support role. Oh, Saligo. Welcome, friend. Welcome to the promotion tournament as uh, that's a level one start that Trevor ends up pushing to Bradley. Yeah, that's actually really bad. This could be a TP forced out, and Bradley might even be able to deny a creep of XP. Let's see if Instinct gets the same treatment. A little bit less so, I'd say. <laughs> Salico ends up burning his TP early. So Mirage Alliance are definitely going to have to play on the back foot now, even if their composition was already going that way. Yeah, that is actually so much less than ideal because also I think the Corky generally favored into the Corky Azir matchup just a little bit. So giving Azir that extra early push going to help out so much, allow Bradley to potentially move around. Jungler's also on mismatched pathing this time. So... I mean, it's going to mean Yukino ending his clear on the bottom side without the potential support of Zardok. Yeah. Very, very impactful when we talk about bot lane being a focus of this early game. I'm curious because when I was talking with you and Grapes and we were having some conversations about uh, CCG as a whole, yes, they're undefeated uh, up until yesterday, but a lot of the, the, the question mark for me came to, this is a team that's willing to sit there and do nothing because they feel like they're better and they can win out later. 
yeah, th this is actually something really true. I mean, they have just kind of had games where they're like, well, we're just going to try to win team fights. Oh, well, we can't really win team fights. We're just going to split push. Oh, it worked. Good job, guys. Go next, right? And it put them in some scary positions. I mean, we said they hadn't dropped the game, but <laughs> anyone that watched Tier 3 knows this team had <laughs> quite a few close calls. It was not smooth sailing for them through the tournament whatsoever. So, I mean, it has gotten them into trouble despite that. And I, again, Yukino on the Xin Zhao, I think he is the one that is the catalyst for this team so often in the early to mid stages. Also got one of the most infectious smiles in the scene, it feels Absolutely. like, uh, if you've seen pictures of Yukino. But I think now we actually see the culmination of their jungle pathing. We did have the mirrored side starts, so maybe a bit of a different focus here. but. Yukino wanting to try to path down towards his bot side. Prism was going to use his TP to get back in the lane as the Nautilus. Yep, and that is the advantage of the Sun of Nautilus, being able to take that TP so much of the time, try to not miss out too much on these creeps, especially into the poke lane, but already CCG going to try to put down pressure in Mirage's jungle. And I think, you know, on the flip... Oh, hang on. We might have some action here. I like here. this, though. Yeah. So, Neo was trying to get on that roam I talked about earlier. Yukino and Trevor, they'll spot Dardock and Neo coming around the corner. They have a lot of kite ability with Trevor and those frozen volleys. Although, Neo has some strength to give to Dardock, too. This one's already moving, which means I think the jig is up for CCG. They're going to take a little bit of poke. 20 gold for their support, but it is traded for Senna Souls and the Raptor camp being secured by Dardock. And as I was going to say before, I mean... Talk a little bit about Mirage Alliance. Again, very much a new look roster. And you say mm -hmm. CCG feels like they are kind of just better than everyone else. The expect expectation is just to beat anyone no matter who they are. But Mirage, this is a team that making big changes. And I think it's fair to say these changes are considered upgrades by most. Sligo and Neo held in very high regard amongst many people in this community. And I think the question is whether or not the individual upgrades are going to be enough to overcome the team struggles that Mirage yeah. Alliance had because it felt to me like their problems in Spring Split were not so much individual, but rather they were, I mean, to be completely blunt, a bit dysfunctional. Yeah. I was a big fan of Will. Uh, very interested to see what Dardock brings to the table as a jungle role. Obviously, he wasn't support earlier, but uh, I, I particularly want to look at some of the other members uh, and especially uh, like a lorem who is very vocal in in the mindset that this team has had there was a lot of question marks offered to a mirage alliance that was not finding wins that was at the bottom of the table for the entire season of nacl and you're wondering oh is this team so dysfunctional in the background they must be yelling at each other the, the vibes must be awful but you get to talk to them and they're very headstrong they're very yeah. confident in themselves and they realize that the, the outside look doesn't matter if they can stay consistent with them. Absolutely. I mean, we, we saw during the break the content piece with Alorum talking to that guy. I mean, he's like, yeah, dude, I've been on so many terrible teams. Like, this doesn't even phase me anymore. I'm going to promote anyway because, like, I, I know I'm good enough, which is, like, I, I mean, that's just, like, such a Giga Chad mentality, I feel like, you know, <laughs> to be like, look, I've done this before, and I, I know I'm good enough to continue playing at a high level. But to continue setting expectations Ooh. as Alorum should be fine. They continue setting expectations. I mean, I will say, Mirage Alliance, they've made massive individual upgrades. I don't think it'll be enough to win them games if they can't elevate the team play as well. So I think that's the big question that we will look to answer throughout the series is how coordinated are they? Because I'm going to be real, I don't think teams like this CCG team are necessarily hands-checkable, even by great players like Saligo and Neo. You also have those level sixes coming up, or at least already achieved. For me, it's looking to see how quickly CCG can get their level sixes for Trevor, if the Enchant Chris Oero started on the map. Speaking of some proactivity, though, Yukino will help with his mid laner and his bot lane to take the first dragon of the game. Feels good. I mean, it's, look, it's been a slow early game, slow grind, but taking an objective 10 minutes in, seven minutes That's in, rather. Full neutral objective control for them. Yeah. And, and that feels really good. I, I think a lot of this comes from Bradley. I mean, we, we talk about hands checking. He is up a wave of CS, and that mid control that he has had, I think, has resulted in the ability to start a lot of these up.
Really good buffer there, but Minstink, but they baited him in. The flash does end up coming out. True shot barrage achieved. Here comes Yukino around the corner too. As Mar Mirage Alliance, they actually tried to make a play over on the bot side, but it came up a little short. They end up getting the flash out of Trevor and the heal out of Instinct. And those are definitely places that could be attacked later on. I mean, this Ash, Ezreal, able to put down so much poke, but as soon as they lose their ability to push up safely in this lane, all of a sudden it's a lot more difficult to really bully out the Sound of Nautilus. I mean, Prismal doing a great job. He's down like seven creeps on an Ezreal Ash. That is completely fine. <laughs> take that uh, all day, it feels like. You're going to take a look now, though, with some of those early objective controls and clears from CCG. It goes back to the conversation of the strengths that this team represents and a lot of the situations they've been in, right? They do feel like being able to hold on the early game, find little things here or there, really pays dividends as time goes on. Yeah, most well, certainly, but we'll have to see. I mean, look, we're, we're at the point, you know, we're talking about paying dividends. We're at the point where we're investing on Summoner's hmm. Rift here. We're not, I'm not doing very much good at that, so. Trading, yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of just like watching our stocks, seeing if they rise because everyone's got jungle camps to farm. They've got little day-to-day -day things to be doing. We're not we're not picking up and running out of the office to go fist fight in the parking lot just yet. Not yet, but maybe in a couple minutes. Maybe in a bit. You know, the, the parking <laughs> lot fist fights come later. <laughs> There is another spawn of grubs coming up. You wonder if CCG can readapt some force up that way. It looks like they're pathing away from that direction, though. We will still have some time to set that way up, but uh, it would be really nice to get grub again for them. They have so much poke and prod ability. They're getting pressed in the bot side of Lorem. It's going for an aggressive invade just to spot out how much of Yukido's jungle is gone. I actually like that a lot. Alorum, basically by just walking through the middle of the jungle, on the Tremor Sense is able to know that Yukino is not on the top side of the map. So Dardoch does not actually have to immediately defend this spawn of grubs and can instead look to collapse in the bottom side river. They're moving towards the Xinjiao. A little bit of 1v1 action here. We obviously have the engage onto Yukino. He's going to use the Crescent Guard, but that's four members right on top of him. And first blood goes to Dardoch. That was such smart stuff. That all came from the Alorum Invaded. They knew that the Xin Zhao could only be bottom, and that was what allowed them to set up for the play. No wards required. So well done by Mirage to pick up a kill for their jungler. Alorum <laughs> is just playing so with annoying, Crimson's dude. wave like, here. He's so annoying, and he just heals so ridiculously much after taking those trades over. He'll be able to match every single time. Crimson get a little frustrated in this matchup up here. A name we know well with his family history, Bradley. Another name we know pretty well. Looking for a play out of Saligo. Wants it. He's going for it. Shifting Sands in. He flashes and gets it. Bradley with the mechanical outplay. The prodigal son of North American mid lane makes his triumphant return in 2024. Solo killing NACL playoffs level talent. Nicely done by Bradley, even able to bait out the Dawning Shadow and avoid it to not give over a trade. Welcome back to the bloody arena, Saligo. Bradley making his name known. He'll have first item spike on the Nasher's Tooth as well, and that gives so much strength to the Azir early. Meanwhile, Trevor getting engaged heavily on bot side. This is the trouble we said in the draft. They cannot get engaged on it. They will lose super hard. Trevor, he's in engage range right now for Prismal. The slow's not going to be there. The oh. hook's not there either. He just sidesteps and says, cool, bro. I cannot believe Trevor managed to live. I mean, he did have the barrier, so he might have been fine regardless, but being able to walk that one out is so critical. Forced to give the wave at threat of a dive at the very least is still a win for Mirage Alliance, but critically, Trevor not dying without that flash. We mentioned how much of a vulnerability that could be, and it allows Yukino to continue with his 100% neutral objective domination. They will end up looking at Grubageddon here. Crimson end up using the all out, so won't have that one available. As they do get five. That's at least good enough. Yukino flashing out, Whoa, realizing okay. there was a lot of big bodies coming his way, and Dardock will sneak in to grab one. Yukino realized he was in the wrong neighborhood very quickly right there. He's like, I don't I don't want anything to do with this. I didn't see anything. I am just gonna walk away. <laughs> 
<laughs> hands up and walk away. No, nothing to see here. Blinders on. Uh, Got to take a look at the map state right now. Although I'm getting some really heavy trades on a Crimson. Dragon is up. Would be a second Dragon in a row for CCG. Mirage Alliance, they are positioning around that way, though. And they also will have Dardock on his way down there, pathing-wise. I think an ideal scenario right here for CCG is just to try to be able to find an arrow on somebody in rotation. Otherwise, don't opt into the 5v5 right now. It feels really difficult to play. I mean, I know Senna, Corky is slow scaling, but it, I, I don't know. It, it just is scary to me, the prospect of Dardock flying in with that Trinity Force completed. And I believe they might have Saligo package as well. Timing should be up for that one. He also got the yep, Trinity got Force it. just completed for Saligo. CCG gonna take their second Dragon though. There was not timing to get here for Mirage Alliance. And that timing has to be clutch, especially when you pick up this Corky, because the package is a big difference maker in any of those fights. You see the Hex Soul is gonna be the one for this game. Alora, some heavy oh. turret trade there. Ooh, Depth Charge used on it, Trevor. They want the Lollipop engage, but Prismal has to use his anchor to get his way out. In fact, they might not even need to oh. run. That's Ash Arrow. That's a really good set up by Prismal, though. He realizes he has a way out, but Bradley, he wants to come over and deny that way out. It is Prismal that ends up falling. Bradley simply first to the play yet again. The mid laner of CCG, he's having such a great first game, able to pick up another kill. Didn't see exactly who picked that one up in the end, but it does cut into the Mirage Alliance gold lead just a bit. It was, in fact, instinct. So both of the carries of CCG benefiting from these plays and oh. now TPing to defend. We got double TPs and Crimson is here to join. Prismal has rejoined the bot side. So Ligo getting caught in transition here. He's gonna use his Valkyrie away. Knock back onto Prismal and Prismal dragged down to the depths there. That anchor is heavy. As now Yukido coming in now clutch. He comes over with the Crescent Guard and Mirage Alliance. They're pushed off their bot side. They lose Prismal and now they're gonna lose a turret. Second time in a row, Mirage Alliance, they try to start the play on the bottom side of the map, but CCG has the ability to respond with more members. Great double TP, Alorum's was barely not up and available when Crimson went, opted not to use it late, stays top lane, he at least denies a few creeps, maybe can even finish off this tower, but it is yet another kill going over to this Ezreal as we can watch this fight again. The decisiveness, Crimson sectioning off Mirage Alliance with the positioning of the teleport alone. Prismal, nowhere to go without Flash. Easy takedown. And honestly, it's really nice to see some of the, the play calling for CCG being fully followed through on. Uh, I think that's the, the biggest thing in these kinds of situations when you have some seriously big names from Tier 3 and from Tier 2 on your roster. It's always a, a question of who's going to get those resources, but it feels like this team and a reason why they've been so dominant is they seem very much on the same page in the way they want to play the game. And they're going to be able to continue picking up neutral objectives. And even though it was first brick going against them in top lane, like, I don't think gold on this Rek'Sai matters that much. Th this is going to maybe sound weird, but I feel like Rek'Sai top is just a new flavor of, like, Nunu, where the goal is just to be as annoying as oh, possible. Oh, no. You can know already popped. <laughs> the hero is going to use it to get out. Oh, my God. They can't deny him. He's wow. going to run his way out of this one. And you can, oh, you can drive my car, Wait, baby. Okay, he's not gonna go mid. Okay, I was like, that would be crazy. Dude, what? Okay. You can't Riot target Games? him. Guys, we gotta stop letting people get in the Herald in combat. It is so broken. Yukino, that is, that's the Herald mechanics I like to see right there, buddy. There's a reason why this guy is talked about throughout our community. The reason why so many junglers single him out because he is just that damn good. I mean, okay, he buffered it. The depth charge it's didn't so hit big. him because he goes untargetable. Wow, able to get away. I honestly wonder, is it better to die with the Herald and kill a tower with it later or save your own life? I, I don't immediately have an answer to the question. We go with the um, dopamine play here, Hawk. All right, yeah. no more thing, no more deep thoughts. We just go with the good play. Exactly. Like for the mentals, you don't get to see a gray screen for 20 seconds. Mirage Alliance doesn't get the dopamine hit of killing you. And now they're really tilted that somehow you escaped. So <laughs> it that. all works out, I guess. Yeah, exactly. We do have a full first item spikes for majority members now as well. Trevor joining that party here. Unfortunately, Prismal just right behind him with the Frozen Heart. I uh, still do want to see Neo be able to complete that first one. It's hard in 
enough to at least find some of those advantages for the Senna. That's what I want to talk about here. As CCG, they've been consistently moving around. They don't have as much of a gold lead as maybe you'd Ooh. want. And now Instinct going to have to burn his flash in mid lane. Mirage Alliance, they have some fight left to give. Good reactions from Instinct, though, to immediately flash away from Dardock and not a lot of that stun to come through. Impressive stuff. Is nice Prismal move. Prismal with the decisiveness, although Bradley pushes him right back. And now Yukino, with this Crescent Guard, staves off so much damage. Saligo has joined, and those rockets reign supreme. It'll just be another tussle that doesn't end up in any blood spilled in mid lane. It's a fight in the parking lot, though. This is what we want. Nobody <laughs> getting killed yet. Somebody call maybe... the cops. Yeah, a, like a steel chair w was picked up and then everyone was like, whoa, 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 not yet. Like, that comes later. <laughs> not yet, not yet. Give yeah. another five minutes. We'll, yeah. <laughs> we'll wait on the steel chair. I do think CCG should just be able to take the dragon. Hex Gates getting Mirage Alliance out on the map, though, very quickly. It's CCG with positioning, but Mirage Alliance quicker off the base. Ever. And then some frozen volleys. Alorum going for it, though. Dardock and Neo on the other side. They have a nice little move. Saligo has joined, and he has the package. He's right on the back line. Instinct and Trevor are going to be the first to fall here. The rest of CCG now in a lot of trouble. The death wall is only the thing separating them from safety. And now Saligo. Oh, the lollipop. It's not enough. Crimson, he's getting brought down, though. He goes unstoppable into his gray screen, and Saligo claims that one. But that's huge. Three for zero. Mirage Alliance and the C saw sways back into their lead. This time a steel chair was picked up and cracked over the head of Trevor and Instinct. And that steel chair's name? Soligo, baby. He's got the package. Look at him. Valkyrie his way in there. And there's no chance for the CCG bottom lane. They are cursing the Hextech Rift. Mirage Alliance came into this one saying, we will go late against you, against a team that we had said loves going late. They love doing nothing and winning the game because they're better. And Mirage Alliance have drafted a plan around that. They say, you can't take us early. We will have more strength in the later parts of the game. And that was such a big play for Saligo in particular because the carries of Mirage Alliance were starting to fall behind CCG. Bradley still up about 15 CS. He had been... It, advantage over Saligo the entire game up until this point, despite being first to a lot of the plays. And I was sitting here wondering, when is Saligo going to get involved? When is he going to make his presence felt? That fight finally able to do it, and he showed up in a big way. Now he's got a second item spike as well. Miramana completion there. Very, very nice. Still going to be looking at that third item for Corky, and that was... The biggest question mark for me coming into it was like, okay, we've seen Corky time and time again, but it feels like it takes so long to get online. Bradley was striking early, but now we're getting into the safe space for Corky. Yeah, and we're getting to that point. I mean, I said I favor a Mirage Alliance draft. I think their scaling is better with the Senate Corky, and you can see Saligo at the top of that gold draft completely leapfrogging Bradley, who is at least the richest member on his own team. Mirage Alliance, of course, 1.5 thousand in the lead at 20. Nothing substantial, but definitely feels good with that quirky two item spike. And on the other side, we're getting to two item spikes now. At least Instinct gonna have his there. I think it's important for the Ezreal to continue to have a lot of say in the consistent damage the CCG are gonna be representing here. Ooh, Crimson. I'll take some heavy trades into Lorm. It's just the wet noodle wet fight noodle that we know fight. and love. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I like to think that if Nerf ever made wet noodles, they would make them spiky. So that's what I think of when I think of wet noodle mm. fights. Interesting. This okay, is no Dardoch. wet noodle. This is uh, this is an engage that gets rebuffed by the Crescent Guard. Now Prismal, he has an angle. He's looking to Spider-Man his way to a depth charge combo. Can't get it. Ends up using it onto Bradley. The Emperor's Divide used early and Bradley falls. Yeah, Dardock, he's got the helicopter noodle. He's able to get in there and make it happen without Bradley. I mean, I wonder if there's an angle at a Baron start. 35 seconds on the death timer for the strongest member of CCG. Has oh, yeah. teleport to get back in, but Mirage Alliance is on to it. Can Instinct get a Miracle Steal? Can Yukino get a 50-50? They're going to TP in a Crimson. Lot of objectives in tier oh, three. A lot. That Baron is doing a lot of damage to Mirage Alliance. Alorum on the other side trying to delay CCG from moving in. It is Mirage Alliance who end up pulling some resources from CG, CCG on the top side, primarily Crimson's TP. Okay, perhaps Mirage Alliance, they heard the legends of the Yukino, Baron, Dragon Steel. I mean, like, seriously, I think this guy stole more objectives than anyone else in the tournament combined. It is illegal how many times he hits these. So I think Mirage Alliance wisely backing off. I like the attempt, though. They get the big pick. They force a response out of 
CCG in the form of Crimson Teleport, and they're able to back away without blowing their advantage. That's the biggest thing, is they are playing the game style they want to play. They are sitting in the face of CCG and saying, you have to do something or we are going to outscale you. And right now, there has not been a big answer from CCG. So a big catch out could be the ticket. I think uh, top players have not had a lot of say in this game so far, even though the wet noodle fights continue to be the case. But I think as time goes on, especially these next few engages, they are going to have a lot of important flanks. Now, we did see tower in mid lane go down. No response from CCG here as they're on to a tier two now as well. They're on to Instinct oh. Tardog. Play with a little confidence there. They might have overconfidently gone in because Bradley is now here to join the fight. And now CCG collapsing out of Dardock. They don't really have an angle here unless Instinct can get of it. He's going to use the Hex Gate out. How, the way Mirage is using these Hex Gates, I mean, I like that dive. It was unlikely that anyone dies, and they forced the Flash out of Instinct. Not traded for any major cooldowns on the side of Mirage ahead of this Dragon. They should have that Depth Charge and the Grandmaster's Might back up and available. And CCG, they feel like they have to do something because Dardock is so chunked. A Baron start could be on the table. Obviously, no TP because the Jax is jungle. They're just going to move down to the Dragon Pit. Again, this would be a sole point for CCG. Gives them a lot of decision-making power around the map. Norman Crimson going at it as per usual. Sun Disk used in the mid lane by Bradley. They have collapsed on a Saligo who overstayed in topside. Yukino and Instinct, they're combining for it. Then it's no need for Yukino as Instinct with his own solo. And that is huge. Dragon spawning right now. They can just take their base. CCG should be able to take that one for free. Hex Tech Soul Point going to feel so good. Mirage Alliance will see if they have anything to say about it. Saligo will have package and TP when he respawns in 25. They still have the Sun Disk up in the mid lane. Dardock just behind coming. the pit. Is he going to give Yukino a little bit of his own medicine? Looks like Mirage Alliance's call is to delay another five minutes and be forced to fight around the soul fight. But that, that is really big because, I mean, Mirage wanted to fight. Two items on Corky, two items on Jax. Not quite two items on Senna, but it's Senna. Who cares? Like, that was the moment to go, and Saligo, unfortunately, getting picked off means that it passes them by. Mirage Alliance, their lead now only cut to 500 as well. And I would actually say, despite not having the gold lead with that soul point and the slow pace of the game we've had so far, I think I favor CCG's position in this game right now. And a team that has a lot of backing behind them, I feel like, in the community. I know I was talking to you guys uh, yesterday, and you guys were saying, you know, unanimous decision to promote here in the promotion tournament. This team feels like they are a super team of Tier 3 and a lot to prove. Again, going back to our main word of the day, or a lot of the returning members and well-known members in the Tier 3 scene. Yeah, Grapes and I and the rest of Tier 3 crew, we did some community predictions for the promotion tournament, and I want to say i actually need to go fact check to this after this game that i was the only person that predicted against ccg uh coming into this promotion tournament and then everybody else basically had a toss-up between winthrop and mirage alliance for their next pick with a couple of like lit esports and stuff thrown in there as well so ccg as you say they are so overwhelmingly considered the auto promote team they are in many ways the mirage alliance of last split the team that had dardock and neo Back then, Mirage want to prove that uh, maybe they won't go down Ooh. so easily, and they still hold that moniker. Oh, Prismal getting his health taken out of his life right there. You know, wants to get that wind becomes lightning. Can't find the engage there. They actually found the lorem here. Bradley doesn't have flash. He just got it burned in the fight just before this one. But Mirage Alliance, they close ranks and they make it out alive. Have a huge health bar advantage though. Reset's going to be forced from Mirage, and look at Crimson. He is free pushing the bottom side. That is a tier two taken with no response. Mirage had to collapse towards the play to get their jungler out and prevent a Baron from being started. And now under the Sun Disc, Mirage <laughs> wants to go. They just really want to fight the Sun Disc there. They have something to say about Sharima. Nice engage onto Yukino. Oh, yes. That's Saligo with a big old package, and it's delivery time. Saligo Valkyrie's away the from the fight. True Shot Barrage comes across. CCG, they are using their range so well right now. Void Rush comes out on the side of Lorem. He can't close the gap, but Mirage Alliance on the other fight do. And that's one gone. Alorum flashing, but can't find the knockup. Dardock wants it. Dardock flashes. This 
Prismal, he's going on the other side. Mirage Alliance, they're flying so close to the edge. They're on the edge of their seat and they take him down. The whole time in that fight, I wondered, did Mirage Alliance go too deep? Could Instinct, could Bradley carry this fight with their poke? But the answer was no. They're just too damn tanky with Neo keeping them alive. No way the they 3v5, 50 -50. The Baron is the focus. Crimson, no teleport to join. Bradley has his in 30. Dardox, Saligo coming to collapse. But this one's not over yet, Lennon. Mirage Alliance, this is dicey as hell. You have all five members here, but Yukino has been known to steal. The turn is here. The Trevor focus is there. They take him down too. Yukino's going to try to get over to the Raptors. He does indeed, but now Instinct, he's in a lot of trouble. He's going to use his Arcane Shift with his Flash, and Mirage Alliance are exuding pressure onto the Rift. Instinct is playing so well on the edge of ranges this game. And now look at this. Minions, they took a bottom lane inhibitor bearing down on the next tower. CCG TPing mid. They've got first access into the Baron area. Mirage has to answer they bottom lane. It. And they don't have TP on Saligo. They don't. And the, the Baron could just get started up right now. They burn it so well. CCG, they're utilizing the map. They know the damage that has been done in the base. And Alorm is this trying is to get crazy. over here. Dardox trying to get in the pit here too. Prismal goes here. for the end game. It's I don't know if they can do it because CCG just wanted a fight. They baked them way their way in. Nice depth charge on Bradley, but it doesn't matter. Two members have fallen. All your front line is gone. And this is what CCG wanted you to do. And at the end of it all, it's CCG. They find the three for zero. They're the ones that are going to be able to start the Baron. And I don't think there's an answer. Mirage Alliance had thought they found their way into the game. But the late game kings of tier three, they slammed the door shut in their face. They say you might have the better scaling. You might have the more consistent late game, but we have the better hands. The rally cry Baron buff a plenty for CCG. A lead in their favor of almost 3,000 gold. And guess what? Round three is about to start because we got a dragon soul on the cusp. And if Soligo is a steel chair, then Instinct is a 14-ton steel 18-wheeler because this guy is playing out of his mind. Look at the way they turn off of this Instinct untouched in the fight the entire time, repositioning to stay safely in the back line as Crimson and Yukino simply buy space. The damage coming from this Ezreal at this point in the game is ridiculous, man. No threat onto the AD carry means no hope in hell for Mirage Alliance to win these fights. In the picture in picture, the dragon was taken a hex soul for CCG. Their poke damage is going to be ridiculous. They also still have two minutes on a Baron buff. And the minions already did the work in the bot lane. So only need to focus on top and mid, make it a lot easier to divvy up these resources. Yeah, and I mean, the crazy thing is, they're only two and a half thousand gold ahead. The gold is so close in this game, but with the soul, with the Baron, CCG is really, really far ahead compared to what you might expect. And this is only gonna continue to balloon as they knock down more and more towers. And this is where the grub conversation always comes back. It rears its head 25, 30 yeah. minutes in. The speed at which you can clear these objectives is ridiculous. And you saw a tier two fall like paper for CCG. They will have some trouble getting the rest of the poke in because Saligo and Co. have some good wave clear. But the mid lane was the focus, at least for Yukino. And now the question is, can Mirage Alliance hold on to the rest of their base? There's the Super Minions in bottom, but it was pre-pushed by one of the members of Mirage Alliance, meaning that they're not fighting on three lanes yet. Oh. Mirage Alliance can hold their base. It's not too bad. They might be able to fight for a second Baron or an Elder, but look at CCG. The poke that comes through is immense. It's so big, and Neo can't heal enough. He's going to have to go towards mid lane here, but the Siege is still there. The Cannon Minion buffed up by the Baron, and here comes CCG as soon as Mirage no Alliance leave. Needed. They try to make a play on Yukino. Dardoch is off in La La Land by himself. Yukino is going to go to the team. Bradley denies them with the Emperor's Divide. And Mirage Alliance, they are feeling desperate. They feel like they need to make something happen here. Dardox getting his life taken from him. Crimson taking some brunt from Saligo. Here comes the Dawning Shadow. Everything blocked from that Hexgate. The blue buff taken away by 
Mirage Alliance. And now, CCG, they move forward. Oh, it's hit the Crystal Arrow. It connects. Oh, it oh, Bradley. He's looking like the Grim Reaper here. Neo have to burn his flash. Dardock trying to save his life. Oh, that Mystic Shot just going a little bit wide. But this pressure is what CCG play oh, with. They goodness. have already taken down the waves. They're looking at the top. And they've, now the minions are there. And they can move out of the base feeling happy. But with the Baron gone, they cannot get anything else. These fights are insane. Both teams riding the line like crazy. Bradley, the use of the Emperor's Divide this game has been brilliant. Saving Yukino mo multiple times. The positioning from Yukino in these fights has been brilliant, knowing exactly how far forward he can go without getting taken down. But at the end of it all, critically, the base was broken. We asked if CCG could. They answer with a resounding yes. And now with Baron and Elder spawning in less than two minutes, they will have so much control over the map. Come time to fight. Always looking back at Mirage Alliance's win conditions. The package going to be super big. Getting those full items completed, right? You have three and a half now for Saligo. Really need a third one for Neo. And we are going to see the GA, fourth item just completed for Saligo. He is the main damage dealer right now, and his positioning is of utmost importance in these next fights. It really is. And I mean, look at Crimson, level 16 on this Kasante. He's actually a level down on both of the uh, other solo laners on Mirage Alliance, but he's so tanky nonetheless. Everybody reaching late game critical mass. But again, I want to draw attention. The gold lead only two and a half thousand. CCG, they have that Hexel, but items still really close. We know Wait. what Senna and Corey can do with this. Mirage Alliance, they're in a lot of trouble here. A beautiful Crescent Guard. Crimson goes Crimson. for the triple knockback, and Neo's in trouble now. Bradley over the top. He gets locked down, though. It's Saligo. Look at him. He's been untouched. We said he's the ticket, but the rest of his front line is going Wait, down. Saligo! He overextends. He's all by himself. And that Guardian Angel ain't going to do nothing for you. CCG, they manhandle Mirage Alliance. They take a 5,000 gold lead, and this team cannot fail. And they win the dangerous game number one. CCG putting Mirage Alliance on match point with this win off of a beautiful team fight from everybody involved. Mirage Alliance had a little bit of say, but CCG slammed the door on them in that one. And what a performance from CCG, but also Mirage Alliance. We got to see some of the most cohesive gameplay I've seen from Mirage Alliance in this entire year so far. And it was really nice, but CCG, they're just too damn good, man. And we asked the question at the beginning of the game, Mirage Alliance, they're not going to be able to hand check these teams. I don't think they did. I mean, even Saligo, he fell behind against Bradley in the 101, right? InSync was going crazy. They can't hand check these tier three teams. But if they're coordinated, they can compete and maybe even win. Wins might come later, but I'm with you, Mazel. That was a coordinated Mirage Alliance, one of the likes that we have not seen in many moons. So the fact that that is the look from this team makes me very excited for the rest of the series. All I'm hoping for is a six game day. We'll see if Mirage Alliance can bring us to that precipice of beautiful first strike from CCG. We'll be back after a short break. They said it couldn't be done. They said the world would never accept a cookie this long. Or a churro and probably not a pretzel either. They also said, under no circumstances should those really long and delicious treats be wildly affordable. To which we said, but we already made them. And they are. Introducing the incredible new Footlong Sidekicks. Get one at Subway today. My name is Bilal, aka Mystar Crimson, and I, am, I play top lane for CCG. I didn't grow up with too many video games. It was mainly just Call of Duty with my twin brother, Sniper. For League, I started in Season 8, I believe. It started with, obviously, my older brother, Viper. And then, me and Sniper found the game, and we decided to play one person with the keyboard and one person with the mouse, because we were pretty clueless at the time. I was more of the mouse, and Sniper was more of the keyboard. Again, maybe Master Yi, stuff like that, you know? I saw my twin brother hit Challenger, and then, like, I saw all the hype around him, and I'm like, I see him, like, as myself, and I felt like I, I could do just as good as he did, you know? I played like 2,000 games. I hit it like two seasons after I started taking rank seriously. I just wanted to be like a two-trick at first. Afterwards, I didn't even know I really wanted to go pro. I just like thought like Challenger was enough for me, but I saw my twin brother hit rank one and I'm like, hold up, I can do this too, you know? 
The first ever team I played on was Dig or Radiance, and it was in 2022. Like, as soon as I hit, like, I think you have to be 15, I'm like, my brother's already on 100 teams. I'm pretty sure he's on the amateur team. I'm like, okay, <laughs> it's my time to compete as well, you know? It was really fun, like, the first year I've played, but, like, I was really clueless, you know? Like, I had no experience. I didn't really know, like, who was good, who was bad, you know? I didn't expect too much going into the, into the team. Like, I just wanted to, like, like compete and see how I felt first, you know? Like I heard good things about them and I, I realized like, sure, like might as well go for it, you know? Going from mid to top was something I'll never regret down the line because like I really thought mid was my role, but realizing that I wanted to go pro and realizing that I actually have to start like playing mages and playing like things outside of my comfort zone, I realized like, like mages really which wasn't something I personally enjoyed. Committing competitive, like a lot of it was just mainly farming and it was like, you can get like those lucky like solo kills or like really well played solo kills, but I feel like top lane is a lot more, a lot more volatile than mid lane. I always knew, like deep down inside of me, that like I preferred to like, like brawl it out on view on on an island. You know, I wasn't too like focused on playing on a team last year. I, I really wanted rank one last year. The main goal was to hit rank one and prove myself that way. Like hitting rank one, like was a really hype moment. But what it made me realize is that if you want to climb in solo queue, like you really need to stick to a certain few champions and like, like learn what like your win con is. I believe it was sometime last year, like during August or September, both my brothers were talking about going to Korea together and then I overheard them and I'm like, like this is a good chance for me to go as well, you know? I heard like a bunch of players improve from going to Korea and like, it was like a really fun opportunity. I just spam games every day. Like I hit like Challenger 700 LP. All three of us were sitting beside each other. Honestly, it was really fun, but also like there, were, there was a lot of frustrating moments in solo queue. Like, like me and Sniper were brawling it out together. We would even get into fights every now and then, but for the most part, I think I, I enjoyed Korea. I don't know if you know this, but all four of my teammates, they've all played in Academy before. I feel like they had like good experience that I can learn from and hopefully like we can maybe even make an ACL. In terms of comp experience, they definitely helped me a lot. I think I still have a lot, a lot to improve on. I think in terms of laning phase, like Bradley can help me with that too, you know? I would say like my team is good like pretty much all around and they can help me with whatever I struggle with. I definitely want to be on like the big stage one day and face like my twin brother. I think that'd be like such a hype match to watch and my family wouldn't uh, know which side to the route for you know from what my brother told me on how his scrims are going i think definitely i have a chance i think a big goal of mine for this year at the very least is the to play on an nacl team i think with ccg i think we can definitely have a chance to make it and if that's the team that uh, ends up working out for me then i'll go for it you know you can go catch me on uh, twist.tv slash my sword crimson and that's pretty that's where i stream and uh show all my games that i grant the rank one for thank you